Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to generate wind loads according to the ASE 7 main wind force resisting system. In this particular video, we will be focusing on creating our wind load definitions for the roof of our enclosed building structure for wind acting on the structure in the positive global x direction. When wind acts on the structure in this direction, we will ensure that we specify all the appropriate design parameters for wind acting normal to the ridge of a gable roof system. Before we create the wind load definitions for the roof areas of our enclosed building structure, let's first take a look at how RAM Elements will calculate the design wind pressures. RAM Elements uses the ASE 716 Chapter 26 and 27 to calculate the design wind pressure for building structures. Since all wind calculations closely follow the code requirements, it is recommended that you're familiar with the ASE 7 and have access to the code while creating wind definitions to ensure that all parameters are set appropriately and to ensure that all pressure types and wind directions are accounted for. When you are specifying your parameters for your roof system, there's a few additional pieces of information you will have to provide the program so it can correctly determine what the roof pressure coefficient will be. This will include the wind direction, whether you are normal or parallel to the ridge of your structure, and whether or not you're working on case A or case B. Now, as far as the angle and the distance from the windward edge, the program will be able to determine this information considering the areas that this wind definition is assigned to. We will now turn our attention back to our RAM Elements application where we're ready to start creating our wind loads for wind load acting on the roof of the structure in the positive global X direction. We will be taking a look at positive internal pressure, and we're specifically going to model the case A condition for the roof. When you're ready to get started, select the Home tab in the ribbon toolbar, and then click on the Wind Definition icon. Now, the majority of the parameters that I've already set up for my windward, leeward, and sidewalls for wind acting on the structure in the X direction would be the same for the roof system. So I'm going to give myself a little head start and select one of those predefined wind definitions that we created in the previous video. Here I can see that all my general parameters, my building geometry, and my topographic factor information is correct. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and tell the program I'm working on my roof system. I'm going to be focusing for this particular load case on case A, and then I'm going to enter my wind direction. So for the wind direction, we have three different options here. We can enter 0 degrees, 90 degrees, or 180 degrees. 0 degrees would be appropriate for the windward side of a gable roof system when the wind load is acting normal to the ridge, which is the case we have for our first set of areas. I'm going to go ahead and also enter the area and the distance from the windward edge, and then the interior point coordinates. Once everything has been established, we can click on the new button, and we will name ours Windward Roof X. Now, in addition to the windward roof, if I were to take a look at the code, I'd also be required to calculate a wind pressure for the leeward side of the roof when wind is acting normal to the ridge. Now, for that wind definition, we're going to enter our wind direction as 180 degrees. 180 degrees would signal that I'm working on the leeward side of the roof. Everything else here would be still correct. So I'll just go ahead and click on the new button, and then we'll say leeward roof X. Click OK, and at this point, I'm going to go ahead and close that dialog. 
Now that I've created my wind definitions for wind in the positive x direction, let's go ahead and assign it to our load areas. As a reminder, load areas are used in rim elements as a mechanism for transferring a uniform pressure load to the supporting members. Now I've already taken the liberty of creating the load areas for my roof system, and now I need to assign load to them. So the first step in my process is to go to the data panel, select the areas tab, and then I'm going to be specifically working on the surface load option. Next, let's go ahead and select the load case that we're working on and the load areas that we're working on. So if I take a look in the loads pull down menu, I'm specifically for right now, taking a look at wind load in the positive x direction with positive internal pressure, and I'm specifically taking a look at case A. So I've selected my load case, and then I'm going to select my windward roof panels or roof areas. Now I've gone ahead and assigned descriptions to each of the areas within this model to make the selection process easier. So all I need to do is select one of the appropriate areas, go up to the spreadsheet tab in the ribbon toolbar, and then click on the by description icon. So this will select the rest of the areas that have the same description. At this point, I'm ready to assign my wind pressure to these particular areas. And here I'm going to select the windward roof X area. As a reminder, this will give you all of your input parameters that are associated with that wind definition. And if you wanted to see some more detailed information on the calculations, we can click on the preview report to see that information. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the variables that were provided to us via this report. We are able to see the final roof pressure and we are also able to see your CESA P value, that's your roof pressure coefficients. Now, if I were to take a look in the ASCE 7, I would be able to see the windward and leeward tables for the roof pressure coefficients at CESA P value. Now, within that table, I'm going to notice that the angle of the roof would determine what the CESA P value were. And it's important to understand that the CESA P value is actually calculated when the wind definition is assigned to a particular area. And the angle for which that area is modeled within your RAM element system will dictate what your final CESA P value turns out to be. Now at this point, let's go ahead and close out of this report. And then we can finish this off by clicking OK. Here I can see the final wind pressure that was assigned to each of those areas. And if I wanted some additional information, I could see the wind load definitions that were assigned. Now it is important to understand that only one wind load definition can be assigned to each area in each particular load case. And it's also important to understand that if any changes happen to your wind definition after you assign the definition to an area, you do need to go back and reassign it as those changes need to be picked up and the pressures would then need to be recalculated. Now at this point, let's go ahead and take a look at our leeward side of the roof. Again, we're looking at wind in the positive x direction. Again, I use some descriptions to make selection easier for myself. And let's go back and assign a wind pressure to these particular areas. Here, I'm going to select the Leeward Roof X option. Again, I have all of my information here. The way the program knows that this is a Leeward Roof is because we assigned the roof parameter of 180 degrees for the wind direction. We'll go ahead and click OK. We can see the pressure that was assigned. And then again, we can see the definition that was assigned. Now, if you are interested in seeing the resulting member forces, because again, these load areas, we can assign pressures to them, but their ultimate goal is to distribute loads to the supporting framing members. If we were interested in that, we can go back to the surface load icon and ask the program to distribute load areas to tributary members. Now, it's not necessary to actually click on this icon before an analysis is performed because an analysis would 
essentially requests a program to do the same thing. But it is nice to be able to see which direction your load arrows are pointing in and what your final magnitudes are in case you want to double check any of the calculations. Now at this point, this completes all of my wind load acting in the positive x direction with positive internal pressure. And I took a look at case A for the roofing system. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.